come as close as you're comfortable with. The one place not to stand if you're not comfortable with the bees is right in front of the entrance of a hive. So on the sides is usually pretty good. Um, but anywhere, if people can fill in this space, this is where the wind's coming from. So the more people on that side, the happier I'm going to be. The happier the girls will be. Thank you. Now, if you want to see a live queen bee, She's in a cage which looks a little different from the cage that we talked about before. The other cage that we talked about was a three-hole cage that we showed. This does exactly the same thing, only this is the candy end of the cage. There's no cork. here. Very nice. This particular case, whereas we would normally take the crate, the cage, which I've still got. It's behind the cage. Oh, thank you. So normally the queen cage will be suspended by a bit of a strap in here. In this particular case, the queen was sent to me separately. So it's, we're still going to treat it exactly the same way. If there was a cork, we would have taken it out and the cork is just going to go here. Now, the reason we set it up this way is just in case it's too warm. If it's too, I'm uh, sorry, too cold. If it's too cold, the bees wouldn't be able to cluster together. So we're going to start off getting the bees clustered together around the queen bee. And then we're going to feed them um, in a way to make sure that she can still get it. They can still get it the food as well. How often should we be smoking? Smoking? Well, with a package, you don't need to smoke at all. Because first of all, they've got no honey that they can go and eat. Um, but we could smoke a little bit just to, to slow down the alarm pheromone. So it's not going to hurt, but it's not going to really help a heck of a lot. Just a little bit of smoke. Now, the trick with this is getting this out. So the easiest thing to do is actually tip it. See, it doesn't want to come out yet, so we'll loosen it up a bit first. They probably already propolized it or something. Now it's starting to move. Okay, so it's loosened. Now I've got the grip of the can. So what I can do is take the can out, which is still two-thirds full of sugar syrup and they don't come out like some big cartoon cloud of bees it's just going to be a few bees on there and they're starting to crawl out they would come out faster if it was warmer they would come out a little bit faster if it was warmer but we can see they're tightened up they're clustered fairly tightly it's in the mid 50s right now it's going to be warm enough for them now we're going to pour the bees over the queen cage here. We may have to bang it to loosen up that cluster. <laughs> Not particularly. No one's been stung yet, right? <laughs> Probably best not to do it on there now. They hold on very tight, so you have to keep on banging the cage a bit. Warm enough, these bees are going to find their way into here if I just put them at the end. That's that come here scent. And you see lots of them are doing it. They stick their butts in the air, start opening their scent glands, starting fanning. And this is telling all the bees, come here, come here, come here. And these bees will soon get the message and they'll start walking in there as well. So they're sending out their own message? A little bit, yes, because everyone's confused right okay. now. So we now have 
these installed there we could set up a hive top feeder which I'll probably do in another video tomorrow but right now what we'll do is we'll just close it up and because I forgot to bring a little an entrance you have, I'm sorry a, a inner cover I'm just gonna uh, put the top on without the inner cover minimize the number of bees that get squashed but some get squashed so now what we have is the bees are installed here now I'm going to set up a little fe a feeder for them okay so I'll just bring over the feeder and some sugar syrup Somebody mind reaching that, that container of sugar syrup, please? Thank you. We can load that up. You can pretty much fill it. If it's cold, we feed them from the top okay. with either a baggie or a bucket feeder or something like that yep. directly above the cluster. But it's warm enough every day that the bees can go to these the entrance feeder. And the entrance feeder will also serve as an entrance reducer here, which is no terrible thing. So now when we take the feeder and we turn it over, this little well of sugar syrup will fill up and the bees will come and help themselves to the sugar syrup there. So that well I might spill a little bit, but it's just gonna go in the entrance. Get past it. There we go. Now they have food right next to the, where the cluster is forming. The bees are occupying the frames. This, this colony started off with a few drawn combs, so they've got something to build on right away. But if you're starting with foundation, it's really important to get the uh, feeder in there. These bees will join the others very shortly, and this hive is now ready to go. Right, now we can look inside a more established colony. So in class you mentioned you could flip-flop um, locations, so they can tell which hive, even if it's, you know, well, like just two feet of movement? Like if you traded this hive for this hive, that not, would be enough? Or? These ones could. These ones can't yet. Because they're These ones haven't done an orientation flight. So what they're going to do is they're going to concentrate on who they are and what's going on inside the hive pretty much throughout most of the day today. But if the wind calms down, they're going to start flying this afternoon. And they'll fly in circles around this hive to orientate themselves so they know this hive is next to this hive and a bit further from these boxes here and the tree is over there and so on and they'll map out the area in a week if I took this hive and put it here I'd have a big cloud of bees looking where is the hive gone because they'll know in fact even if I moved it back two feet there'd be a big cloud here saying something's different here before they'd eventually go into that. Okay. See, they're starting to work their way in and realize they're climbing off here yeah. <laughs> and going into the hive. In another hour, most of those will be in there. If you wanted to move them in your own yard, how far would you have to move them in order for them to be able to, you know, in other words, if you moved them at night, right? Well, you'll have a confusion the next day, so it's always best to think about it before you do it. Yeah. And get them in the right place to start with. Yeah. However, if I, if I said I have to move it from here to over there, yeah. if I could and it didn't make any difference, I just moved them a little bit at a time. Yeah. Now with a lot of other hives, I can't. it's hard to do that because bees start drifting. Going yeah. to the, these bees would be going to that hive, for yeah. example. If I took this and moved it over here, most of them would end up there in that hive. But uh, when they if you're talking about your own yard with if you only got one or two hives you can move them gradually if you had two hives I would separate them yeah. first and then move them to the final location it's much easier to move them a mile than it is to move them a hundred yards okay a lot easier okay 
In fact, if you're moving them 100 yards, the easiest thing to do, take them somewhere a mile away for a couple of weeks, <laughs> and, then bring them back. and then bring them back to the final spot. That would actually be easier. Okay, you got a, a little friend. I do, with a little pollen on him. Yeah, well. Oh, her. Sorry, her, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Now, let us look inside a more established colony. We'll start off with a, um, a smaller one. Why don't we go over that way here? And we'll start off with a hive of 